Welcome back, everyone, to the third part in this April 8 Eclipse special presentation series. If you haven't already, go back to part one and part two and watch those first. You won't want to miss them. So, Don, what are we going to go over today? Well, Mackenzie, what we're going to go over today is we're going to go over, we've talked about um, these eclipses. We've talked about that in the Bible they mean uh, something that they're for signs. We talked about how the signs have to be associated with the gift of prophecy or with prophecies. And, um, and we talked about a city uh, that is connected to the first eclipse in 2017 and that is also connected to the understanding of Nineveh because we showed that the movement in 2017 to warn Nashville about uh, impending doom uh, was called Nineveh to Nashville. So we've, we've created a connection. But what we haven't asked, Mackenzie, is why? Very good question. Why Nashville? Why Nashville, everyone? Why are these judgments even coming? Why these eclipses? Why are these significant things? Why now is a very good question. Yeah, and, you know, when I talk to people about it, they always say, why Nashville? You know, they, can, they say, well, you know, Las Vegas or you know, uh, New York or someplace like this. But people don't really know how fallen Nashville really is. And especially the fact that it's supposed to be in the Bible Belt, um, you know, in the southern United States. They're a very religious community. In fact, if there is a Bible Belt, and I believe there is, uh, Nashville would be the belt buckle, uh -huh. right? And yet in Nashville, in this supposedly religious area, uh, all kinds of different things are going on that aren't very religious at all. So this brings us to some of the next series of clips that we're going to show. So this brings us to a couple questions. Number one, we showed some things that are happening in Nashville. There's quite the nightlife there. Uh, there's other significant things that we're going to address yes. about Nashville. But also, you've seen the little video there of whatever this was, this fireball coming from the sky. And uh, we're going to talk a little bit about, there's a couple options, what this could be. That's right, Mackenzie. And, you know, uh, Nashville is also known as a, a music city. Mm -hmm. uh, and it's the center of uh, country and Western music. And um, it has like a, a nightlife scene there that people from all over the whole United States go. They go to enjoy the nightlife, all the many bars that are there where they play this music and they get intoxicated and all these other things. So going back to some of these, these quotes here in these dreams, when in Nashville it seemed this immense ball of fire coming from heaven and it settled in Nashville and it consumed some of the, the buildings there. And then like we read last time, uh, this lady said that she was specifically seeing these pillars and we talked a little bit about these pillars last time and what this could signify. Mackenzie, there is no other building in all of Nashville that has fulfilled every part of the dream. Uh, being built where they were building other buildings that were uh, built with cast pillars, and uh, there's no other building except this building here uh, that we're looking at here in um, Centennial Park in Nashville, Tennessee. And what is interesting about this building is that it is a 
a temple. It is a pagan temple. Uh, here's an image right here of what it looks like today. It's a reproduction, a scale reproduction of the, um, of the one that's in Greece. This is the original um, uh, temple of Athena that's on the, uh, the Acropolis in uh, Greece there. And what is inside of pagan temples, Mackenzie? Well, typically idols or the gods that are the temple is right, built right. for. So what, do we have a pagan idol or god in the temple in uh, Nashville? Well, unfortunately, There yes. she is. Actually, I say she, but uh, <laughs> the guy who actually made this giant sculptor, sculpture um, used his face uh, for the statue. So even though this is the, uh, the goddess Athena, it's actually a man's face. Mm -hmm. And of course, the goddess Athena was the goddess of war and wisdom uh, to the Greeks. So why is something like this, and you can see the sheer scale yeah. of this. We should mention this here because this statue right here is the largest indoor statue in the Western Hemisphere. That's pretty significant. I mean, you can see this guy and you can see this uh, statue next to it. So it's pretty big. It's very big. So what is something like this doing in the Bible Belt? What, what is it doing in a Christian nation? That's a good question. Why would we do it? Um, you know, the Bible talks about that we shouldn't have these images and statues and stuff like this. And yet here it is. So when, the, when we do this idolatry, as the Bible would say, right? We're making these images, these other gods, we're, we're actually recreating these pagan temples that were in Greece. What uh, are some examples that we see in the Bible, what takes place because of disobedience like this? Oh, well, judgments come. You know, and we see in ancient Israel uh, that they had eventually put up idols in the temple of God and uh, the Lord removed his hedge of protection from that nation and allowed judgments to befall it. So judgments follow disobedience. Judgments follow disobedience, yes. So we have, we're talking about this ball of fire that's going to consume Nashville. And that rings a bell for me in the Bible of a city that was going to be destroyed and was destroyed by fire. And that is this city right here. Yeah, because what we're talking about is uh, the, the honest truth is, Mackenzie, we don't know what the ball of fire is. We're just told an immense ball of fire. And so what we've done is we've looked in, uh, in history and we've looked in, in prophecy. Um, and one of the things that it could be is a judgment like uh, directly out of heaven, right? Mm -hmm. Like Sodom and Gomorrah, uh, where God rained fire and brimstone uh, directly on the city. Um, some people think, well, it could be a meteor. Now we have an image here. This is of the Ballinger Crater. This is about 17 miles northwest of uh, Winslow, Arizona. And I don't know if you can tell from this image, but the width of the crater from one side to the other is just about one mile. Wow. And the depth of it is 555 feet. So uh, it was a relatively small uh, asteroid. Um, they have it in, the, in, in that center there that you see at the rim of the crater, what's left of it. It was an iron meteorite. Uh, they, uh, they estimate it was uh, traveling at about 22,000 miles an hour. And with that force, uh, the impact uh, created this hole where it threw the debris out uh, from the impact. Um, and so can you imagine that something like uh, this would hit Nashville. Yeah. But what's interesting about this, Mackenzie, is that has there ever been asteroids or craters in and around Nashville? Well, here it, here it is. So there's actually four uh, right there, but some people believe, it, like I do, that the, the one there, if you look down at the map of Nashville, you will see uh, these four uh, things uh, in, in pink there. Uh, these are the different uh, asteroid craters. Um, and some of us believe that there's really three. 
uh, that the two that are right next to each other are probably part of the same asteroid that broke apart. Mm. Um, so you have three of these uh, asteroid craters right here. Now, what's interesting, Mackenzie, remember we talked about the, um, the Ballinger crater there in, uh, in Arizona being about a mile wide. Yep. Now, we're up here in Canada, and I don't have my uh, kilometer hat on. Mm -hmm. Right. So what is what is a, a, a how many kilometers is a mile about? Do you know? Well, it's about one point six kilometers. OK, one point six kilometers. Well, the the Wells Creek crater here in Tennessee. Now, the reason why we showed the one in Winslow, Arizona, and, and that's also visible uh, down there in the right hand bottom screen is because uh, in Tennessee, it's a very lush place. And the craters are filled in with trees and mm. vegetation and everything, unlike the one in the desert, which is just full of desert, right? Yeah. Um, but this uh, uh, Wells Creek crater, which is just northwest of uh, the city of Nashville, is about 7.5 kilometers in diameter. Wow. So that's what, almost three times the size of the crater that we're looking at yep. in, um, in, massive. in Arizona. And so one could say, well, is this, uh, is this a coincidence? Well, to my knowledge, there's not another major city in the United States that has so many impact craters around it as Nashville, Tennessee. And, and as a matter of fact, I had an interview with one of the head geologists of the state of uh, Tennessee, and I asked him, with all the meteor craters that are around Nashville, do you think another one is ever going to hit? And he said, well, he, he thinks it's not a matter of if, but when, and he said he, that he hoped he just wasn't around when it happened, because wow. it would be catastrophic. Yeah, and that's very interesting because even on the logo here of the sports team in Nashville, there's these three stars representing these Well, this craters. is an interesting story. Um, I took one of my associates out to lunch one day for his birthday in Nashville when we were doing some evangelism down there, and we went to a Thai restaurant to get some good vegetarian food. And uh, the lady asked us that, that was running the restaurant why we were in town. And we said, well, we were you know, making a documentary on the destruction of Nashville. And we told her this story. And she was actually the one that pointed out, wow, there's these three asteroid craters around Nashville. Uh, those are represented by the three stars on the, on the football uh, logo, which by the way, the football logo of a burning asteroid, meteor, whatever you want to call it, uh -huh. it has nothing to do with the team, right? Except for one thing, the Tennessee Titans. Titans are pagan gods, mm -hmm. right? So with exception of that, there's nothing to do at all uh, of having this burning uh, you know, symbol. Now I should point out that on the flag, of the state of Tennessee, there are also these three stars, um, and they're supposed to represent the, gif, the different um, geologic uh, formations through the state. You know, there's like highlands, there's the medium, and then there's the lowlands, and these stars represent these three geographic areas. But, um, you know, this lady uh, who became convinced of what we were saying, and that's another thing, Mackenzie, I've never seen anything like this in evangelism uh, typically, if you go to somebody and you say, you know, would you like a book on Bible prophecy? I'm good. But if you start out by saying there was a woman that had this dream and this is what she saw, people are interested. It's so amazing. It is. So that's one of the, the ideas of what this ball of fire could be coming from. Yes. And there's another one, though, uh, that's just as interesting. And we want to be fair because, you know, to be honest, we have no idea what it is. But we're looking at the evidence, right? We're making our decision based on the weight of the evidence. And there's a lot of evidence here for an asteroid or something like this. But Mackenzie, there's also this other evidence that is also pretty powerful. There it is. And this has to do with something that maybe people would never even consider. Yes. So Mackenzie, what we're looking at here, this is an old illustration of the city of Mecca. Now, Mecca is in uh, present-day uh, Saudi Arabia, but Mecca is also the hometown of a person by the name of Muhammad. Now, Muhammad lived at a time when Mecca, they were worshiping idols. 
And uh, the young Muhammad went into a cave, according to the story goes, uh, and while he was in there, he had a vision, a dream, whatever you want to call it, and uh, he was a shepherd boy, and he was told to go down to the Kaaba, and Kaaba in Arabic means cube, and that's represented by this black cube that we can mm -hmm. see here in the illustration. And what he did is that uh, him and his followers went down uh, into Mecca and they destroyed all of these pagan statues and idols and everything like this. And so uh, Islam itself, the religion, has its foundational structure and history in specifically destroying uh, pagan statues. Which is very interesting because we're talking about a pagan temple That's and right. statue being destroyed. And here's the thing. You see, there has been a revival, as everybody knows, in the last 50 or 60 years of, of, of uh, uh, radical Islam. And I say radical, but it's really not radical because this is what Islam is all about, right? It's, it would be conservative. <laughs> <laughs> right, they're going by the teachings. Uh, there's been this reinterest in the Islamic world of going by what uh, they were told. And this is an interesting thing because w there has been a resurgence uh, in recent years uh, through the followers of Islam to go around and do exactly what Muhammad and his followers did back in the 6th century. Yes, and we're going to show some clips of this and it is quite something to watch. Syrian temple built nearly 2,000 years ago is now a pile of rubble after the terror group ISIS rigged it with explosives and blew it up. This is what the temple of Baal Shemin looked like before it was destroyed. In the past, ISIS has gone after smaller structures and statues claiming they were uh, encouraging the worship of false idols and that therefore they must be destroyed. But some experts say, really? Islamic State militants have destroyed a temple at Syria's ancient ruins of Palmyra, according to activists. The militant group claims ancient relics promote idolatry and say they're destroying them as part of their purge of paganism. The Islamic State militants are reportedly demolishing ancient archaeological sites in Iraq and Syria. The latest in a series of efforts are to rid what the terror group says are symbols that promote worship. So we have these um, Muslim groups that their whole purpose is to destroy these pagan temples and, and worship sites. Absolutely, Mackenzie. And there's no secret that most of these uh, Islamic groups in the Middle East view the United States as the great Satan. And, you know, to be honest with you, you know, when you look at the crime in America, when you look at the, you know, all the abuses that are going on in this country and how far America has, has fallen, uh, it, would it not present itself that the largest pagan temple in America with the largest pagan statue in the Western Hemisphere uh, would be the target of those whose role it is to destroy all pagan temples? Yes, and we know that this is becoming even, uh, I mean, Islam itself is becoming very popular even in America. And there's a lot of Muslims coming to America, which is going to have effect on things like this, on events where they might be targeting specifically places like Nashville yes, and, and the temple there. You know, some kind of a weapon could be used uh, that looks like a fireball coming down out of the sky. We don't really know, but we... 
we look at this thing uh, and what they stand for and what they say, and uh, we see that there is a plausibility that this could be taken out in some kind of a major terrorist uh, attack. And you know, we've seen these fireballs before, right? Did we not see the Twin Towers in New York? I know some people uh, think that you know, it was an inside job, um, but um, nonetheless, uh, terrorists of some kind, whether they were approved by the American government or mm -hmm. not, took down these towers. Uh, and, uh, and Osama bin Laden you know, claimed responsibility. So they're not beyond doing really bold things. And this could be bold. But you know, Mackenzie, one thing that we haven't talked about is who's the woman that had these dreams or visions, number one, and why should we even consider what she had to say about this fireball on Nashville? Has she said any other things that have come true? Well, that's a very good question. And the reality is that there is other things that they've seen and they predicted, and they actually are things that have come true and are becoming true as we speak. So here's one more reference. This is from 1899. And this is from the lady, right? This is from the same lady. Those who apprehend no danger and think they can work on the same lines in the South as in the North have no real wisdom. In the South, the spirit of slavery is not eradicated. It has only been smothered for a short time. Now that is a very uh, precarious and um, interesting quote because most people would say, well, there's no slavery. You know, I read this quote right here about 30 years ago, and I thought to myself, that sure doesn't look like it would happen in my lifetime or anytime soon. Uh, all, all she said it, and it was intriguing to me, and I had seen many other prophecies that she had made and how they've come true. Um, but notice this next quote. There will be slavery just as verily as it has been only upon a basis that is more favorable and secure to the white people. So what she's saying here is that it's going to be just as it has been, right? Yep. But it's going to be more favorable for certain people, and she says white people. So let's take a look at these clips. The United States is committed to ending modern slavery. These girls were victims of something hard to believe something you might never expect, something that happened in plain sight. You are looking at girls who were held as slaves in America, not for a week or a month, but for years. Tennessee is a top 20 state for human trafficking, this alarming statistic. Nashville has become one of the top cities for human trafficking. And experts say the many interstates we have allow traffickers to move people. Well, Mackenzie, let me just say this. Um, these young women that were slaves, they weren't sex slaves. Yes, there are sex slaves, human trafficking, but there are industries where people are literally in, in various forms of manufacturing and other areas are held in slavery. And this is supposed to be slavery as it was back then. Absolutely. As you know, they can't leave, they're locked in these warehouses. Uh, and they're locked in different places of, uh, you know, where, for sex trafficking and stuff like this. Um, it, goes not, it goes from manufacturing all the way to agriculture. Mm -hmm. And uh, the estimates are that in the United States, as we speak, there's between a million and two million slaves, right? It's almost hard to believe, but this is happening right now. It's a huge and, number. And as we saw in this clip right here, that uh, Nashville, Tennessee, is one of the areas where it's the biggest area of human trafficking because there are all these interstates that intersect uh, Nashville. Um, Mrs. White, the woman that had the dream, she said that it would be in the South. Nashville's in the South. Uh, and so these prophecies uh, regarding slavery, it's fulfilled. We've seen it. It's in our, we've seen it in our own eyes. So there's another thing that she mentioned would take place close to the end, and that is this. In India, China, Russian, Russia, and the cities of America, so this is some that's gonna come here. Yes. It says, 
thousands of men and women are dying of starvation. So this is very interesting to me because with all the talk that we've had of, you know, the United Nation, these world elite groups and all these kind of things and um, the pressures since the health crisis and all of these um, events, food cost has been on the rise and uh, starvation has been increasing globally. Absolutely. So here it says the moneyed men, because they have the power control of the market, they purchase at low rates all they can obtain and then sell at greatly increased prices. That sounds like an elite group of people It sounds to me. like Bill Gates, right? He's buying up all this farmland in the United States. Why is he buying up farmland? Because, you know, if you can control the, the food? food, you can control money. You can control the money and you can control the people. That's right. They purchase at low rates all they can obtain and they sell at greatly increased prices. This means starvation to the poorer classes and will result in a civil war. And then she references Daniel 12 verse 1 that says there will be a time of trouble such as never was since there was a nation. At that time Michael shall stand up. So we're looking and this is something that has been in the news time and time again recently that civil war. Look, Mackenzie, this woman has said so many things that have come true that we could be here for a day literally giving presentations about things that have happening. Um, but the reason why we're picking these different things here is because this is what some of the people that are watching these eclipse videos are saying. Yes, uh, they're, they're connecting they're, this they're to connecting these eclipses. They're connecting it to slavery. Mm -hmm. They're connecting it to the human trafficking that's coming over the southern border and America being judged by it. Yep. And they're connecting it to civil war. You know, they're saying there's going to be another civil war. Look, uh, anybody knows that, it, that goes to the grocery store right now, and as we go to buy something, um, you know, I like produce, Mackenzie. I like tomatoes. And you go and you buy a tomato and you pick it up, and you're like, you know, three or four bucks in that picture, three ninety nine. dollars Wow, for this. Yeah. Eating a tomato becomes a luxury, right? And so food prices. Uh, this is from the Washington Post, this... Uh, this little clip right here. Here's why food prices keep going up. Yep. So In they're increasing. They are increasing. We see fuel going up, We see, which is going to make food go up. Absolutely. In Canada, in just a little while, fuel is supposed to go up over 20%, 20 percent, 20 plus percent price, which means that food has to increase because yeah. the food gets transported. Everything. And, and I read an article that the average meal is trucked about 1,200 miles. It's a long Look ways. at this quote right here. This is from The Guardian. It says, the next U.S. Civil War is already here. We just refuse to see it. And a lot of people are talking about civil war happening in the United States and right now. There's such division. Everywhere I go, all over America, into different stores and different you know, municipalities all over the nation, uh, people are saying, you know, the division can't last much longer. They believe there's a civil war coming. In fact, Mackenzie, there's something that's going to be released by Hollywood this spring. There it is, right there. Civil War. It's a, it's a movie that's coming out. Four uh, days after the eclipse, by the way. Yes. And what's interesting about this movie that's coming out uh, called Civil War is that uh, Hollywood uh, and these kind of people that make movies and stuff like this usually try and loosely base, base them on the realities that are going on right now. Yep. So we're going to finish off with this quote. I am instructed that when the Lord's time comes, should no change have taken place in the hearts of the proud, of proud, ambitious human beings, men will find that the hand that has been strong to save will be strong to destroy. No earthly power can stay the hand of God. No material can be used in the erection of buildings that will preserve them from destruction. When God's appointed time comes to send retribution on men for their disregard of his law and for their selfish ambitions. So why are these judgments coming? Because of disobedient and disregard of God's law. Amen. Disregard of God's law and, and, and actually even flaunting it, right? Just like ancient Israel did. They flaunted it. Yes. And that's what we're doing here in America today with 
all kinds of different things that are taking place. So this is not the final end. We have one more part where we're going to go into some more detail. But this has been very interesting. We have these events that are coming. We could talk, we could go on for days, honestly, about yes, all the could. things that are lining up with, with these uh, solar eclipses and the things connected there and, and discuss all of it. But the one point we need to make clear, number one, we're not setting any dates. No dates. We're not setting any dates. These signs are for warnings. So we need to take these warnings as warnings from God and say, Lord, we repent for our disregard for your law. Amen. And that's what these cities need to do that are disregarding God's law and breaking the commandments. And they need to repent for this. And hopefully like Nineveh, when Jonah went there and they seen the eclipse and they heard the message, they repented and were spared at least for a time because eventually Nineveh was destroyed. It was destroyed. But By it fire. Was, yeah. It was pushed off for a time. Amen. And we want to put this to everyone that these events, if we go to God and we repent, that it doesn't have to come so soon because one of these uh, references in these stories it said that the people said, we knew this was going to happen, but we didn't know it would be so soon. That's right. And it was just as we had been talking about it. So because we're talking about this, it could happen soon if there is no repentance. Absolutely. Not putting any time on it or anything like that. But according to the woman that had the dream, like you said, the people talk about it and then it happens. And so could it happen soon? It could happen at any time. So we want you guys, what you take from this, to see we need to take these as warnings from God. We need to see that we need to repent. We need to be ready for His soon coming because He is coming soon, imminently. And these signs have been fulfilling for a long time. And the only reason that God isn't here is because we're not ready yet. And we need to get ready and we need to give the message and warning to the entire world so they can be ready. For I think this. that's an important point, Mackenzie, because we need to be ready too. Uh, and the fact of the matter is we're not any better than the people that live in Nashville. Uh, Jesus Christ, our Lord and Savior, uh, died for all. And so um, we all need to repent and take this seriously. We do. So if you liked this video, Please share and subscribe the video. Share it with your friends, with your families, with other people you may know, people in Nashville, people who are going to be affected by these events that by the evidence from what the Bible said, these signs, and then there's dreams connected with this. This is an event that will take place. And we need to make sure that those who can be warned are warned. So we will have another part it's going to come a little bit later. We're still working on some of the details and uh, it's going to delve even deeper into some of these topics. God bless and we hope to see you in the next video.